This next graphic uh, over, is an overview of, of a lot of the studies have been done looking at what happens when you were to take a, a, a gentleman with low testosterone, give the man back testosterone, and what happens. There are studies showing that you can uh, restore or improve sexual function. You improve mood. There are studies suggesting it's beneficial in depression. Energy improves. Lean body mass improves, and along with that, strength as well. Uh, <clears throat> bone mineral density increases, and, and uh, you heard a lovely talk on, on, uh, on osteoporosis. Uh, it is true we have a number of studies suggesting that the amount of calcium in bones or the bone density increases, but the studies have not been done yet to address the fact of whether or not those changes translate into a fracture risk reduction. Men that are low in testosterone may have an eight-fold increased risk of getting osteopathic fractures, but it's a whole other, other issue whether giving testosterone to those men reduces their risk of fracture. It also cuts down your fat mass as well. We have a number of different treatment options. So it's nice to have a choice. You can give testosterone by injection. This is an old standby. You can take it orally. We have a safe form of oral testosterone in Canada called Andriol. Uh, the other older forms we uh, tend not to use for fear of uh, liver toxicity. Uh, testosterone can be given uh, through a patch on the skin. You can rub it on the uh, skin in a gel form. And they all have pros and cons and uh, various uh, uh, reasons to use one form over another. So I talked a bit about, about the, the, the general effects on testosterone, uh, but the testosterone deficiency. This next graphic is a bit uh, more complex, and it, and it shows the prevalence of testosterone deficiency in different disease states. From at the top here, obesity, just being obese. When you gain weight, your testosterone level will drop. Um, this is a, a real motivator for a lot of men that you see in, in the clinic. If you tell them that, uh, that uh, they lose weight, <clears throat> and, I, and I have actually seen, not well demonstrated in studies, I have seen men normalize their testosterone level by losing weight and assuming a healthy lifestyle with more sleep and more exercise, time and time again. So it comes back to what Dr. Rizzo was saying, a healthy lifestyle is, is the cornerstone. Diabetes, you can see here in the second line, uh, but a two-fold increased risk of low testosterone in that disease. High blood pressure, uh, osteoporosis was talked about already, and a number of other disease uh, conditions. But having an association with a low testosterone level with the disease doesn't mean that the low testosterone causes the disease. You have, to, you have to show that over a period of time, one phenomenon followed the other to lend credence to causation. Or another way is to give testosterone to men with a certain disease who have a low testosterone and see that you benefit that person with whatever disease it is. One of the very well-studied um, populations is the Massachusetts Male Aging Study. And in this graphic, over a period of nine years, men who entered this study with a low testosterone, this is the free testosterone, the free T, had an increased rate of developing diabetes later on. So, so it, it's, not just, it's not just a casual association. If you're low in testosterone, you tend to gain weight, you tend to gain visceral fat, which I'll show you in a moment, and you have an increased risk of getting diabetes. What is visceral fat? Visceral fat is bad fat. This is a cross-section CT scan right across here. <clears throat> and on the uh, left side of the graphic is a, is a normal cross-section, what we'd all like to see, a sort of a, the six-pack cross-section. The white here is, is on CT is uh, fat. On the right side, you can see there's a lot more fat. And notice that this area here, this is the muscle. If you were to pinch your stomach uh, on the right-hand side, if this was you, you wouldn't feel it any different than the graphic on the left. It's fat that's actually inside. It's wrapped around your intestine. It's in the liver. It's around the kidneys. It's called visceral fat. It's bad fat. It's associated with increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, sudden death. You don't want this. So um, why do I mention visceral fat? I, I, I mention it because it's associated with low testosterone. There's an entity called the metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome <clears throat> occurs in men and women when there's a lot of visceral fat associated with some other parameters. Uh, generally, it's abdominal obesity. 
It comes along with high triglycerides, a type of uh, fat in the, in the blood, low good cholesterol or HDL, high blood pressure, and resistance to insulin. This is your insulin in your body just can't work appropriately. If you have three or more of these parameters, you have what's called the metabolic syndrome and an increased risk of having a vascular event, that being a heart attack or a stroke. Here you can see a two-fold increased risk versus someone who doesn't have any of those five risk factors. And in addition, you're more likely to develop diabetes, five-fold increased over someone who does not have that fat. So as you go through life, you want to keep your muscle bulk up and not accrue a bunch of central body fat if you want to stay healthy. Now, how does this tie into testosterone or possibly tie into testosterone deficiency or hypogonadism? Here's a few studies for you. The first one is looking at men with sexual dysfunction, about 800 fellows. And in this population of men, if they had MS here as uh, uh, metabolic syndrome versus not, those that had metabolic syndrome defined as a total testosterone less than eight, threefold more likely to have metabolic syndrome. There's an association there. And a testosterone level, total testosterone level of eight nanomoles per liter, that's pretty darn low. That's a very low level. But there's a more sinister thing here. Uh, the metabolic syndrome I showed you had, a, had an increased risk of causing death. And in a study that was uh, first uh, released uh, two years ago in about 80, uh, 800 men again, there was this threefold increased risk again of having a low testosterone level in men who had the metabolic syndrome. And associated with that was an increased risk of death. So it upped the ante. It's not just about your muscles. It's not just about development of diabetes and fat. There's potential for low testosterone to have an increased uh, risk of, uh, of death in men.